Alright guys, we're back for uh, round 11's review for Supercoach 2024. Uh, no webcam this week because computer is absolutely fried. Um, I, I don't know what's wrong with it, to be honest with you. Uh, it feels like every driver in it has just gone kaput. So, um, yeah, uh, basically only just got the mic working, which is why the recording's going out. Thought this was going to have to be a like a mobile recorded YouTube short type of week, but... Uh, Let's see how this goes. It might be a bit choppy. Uh, so twenty three forty eight was the score. Um, I went down in rank. Honestly, I did think I'd go up. Um, but I guess I underestimated some like of the huge scores of the week. And you know there was obviously one big big score, the the Gorn one eighty, which uh, didn't captain. Um, but yeah, so we'll go into it. As you can see, like the value is just dead for the team. Uh, let me just undo all that, um, trades I was looking at, I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to stay with them after a bit of, like, thinking about it. So, going into it, Ryan was good, 132, thought it'd be a little bit better, um, they played Collywood Thursday night, or Friday night, uh, I thought it would be a little bit better, because Collywood had a couple of outs, but, uh, all in all, I think it was fine, um, truth be told, um, I hope this isn't too loud. It is going into the red a little bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, stuff I can fix in editing. Uh, Dacos, similar thing, right? Like, Rio's midfield doesn't really look that crazy to me. Um, I mean, actually pretty good. They're top three for, like, limiting scores, but I'm guessing they're just absorbing scores rather than, like, actually playing defense. That's kind of been the knock on them for a minute is Frio's midfield doesn't really play any defense. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I thought Dacos would probably go a bit close to 150. Um, I'm, I guess I'm lucky he didn't because I didn't have him vice captain or anything like that. But, yeah, expect a little bit better from uh, the Ryan Dacos duo. Houston, poor week from him, considering it was north. Oh, pardon me. Um, yeah, had a cold that I had to... Uh, take. Um, so I think we're on Sheasel. Sheasel, this was probably his first really good week in the midfield. Um, I, I thought they still got, you know, smashed. Um, so this change hasn't worked at all, moving Sheasel up. Um, hasn't made North play better, hasn't given him any type of spark or anything like that. Uh, yeah, so of course we're just going to keep doing it, right? Let's, uh, whatever. Hopefully he can hover around a 110 uh, for the rest of the year. I do think it's going to probably drop to like a 105, maybe 107. That will still be top six because um, a lot of defenders are unreliable this year. Not saying they're bad, I'd just say they're unreliable. Say outside of uh, the Ryan and Dacos. Um, Martin can put up a stinker, Naz can, Houston evidently can. Um, but yeah, I think she's will be fine if you've got him. I don't think he's a must trade or anything like that. Maybe it, two weeks ago, if you wanted to like save yourself from a price drop, you could have traded him. But back down to 84, 550. I think that was like his starting price, wasn't it? Yeah, basically. Uh, he started at 555, 540, whatever it was. Um, we'll take that. Uh, Martin, like I said, just a bit of a poor game from him. Uh, Went missing the entirety of the fourth quarter. Um, really, I don't... I should bring up the quarter by quarter fantasy scoring. I wouldn't be surprised if he had, like, a two-point fourth quarter. Um, it was it was really bad from him. Uh, other than that, I think the game was fine for him. Uh, it was kind of like your typical 105-ish game, which is what he's averaging, so it sounds about right. Um... Naz, good game from him. Uh, Saints still are uh, very poor, honestly. Um, I don't know what like their game plan is, but forcing all these contests and playing super contested footy with guys that aren't the cleanest at getting balls away from a contested stoppage, like Steel, Steel isn't the cleanest player in terms of disposal, right? Like he's a great player. Um, he's definitely like the contested bull you want, but he's not very clean at getting it away from a stoppage. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, this game plan is a bit weird. They did move Naz around a little bit. I think he got a little bit of midfield time. Uh, not 
necessarily on ball, but kind of like closer to stoppages. Um, we'll see how it goes. Worst case scenario, they've changed him into a midfield role like Sheasel, and it kills his scoring because I think Sheasel is like head and shoulders just m more skillfully uh, attuned to playing other roles than Naz is. Closey, not bad for a bench score. Um, means he can hold him for a little bit longer. Yeah, 77. Uh, if he can just last through the buys, you know, maybe you lose like 10, 15k on him, but gives you a score, make sure you hit best 18 and everything like that. What's he? Uh, 14? Yeah, that's a good week to get rid of him. You could even get rid of him um, earlier, honestly. You could probably get rid of him next week if you wanted to, because you'll have a lot of guys coming off their buy this week. So, you know, say you trade Cheezle, you can do something closer to get Sheasel back after this week. You can get Sorko, you can get um, Neil, Dunkley. There's a couple of uh, Heaney. Like, there's a, a couple of big teams on buy this week. So, you know, th there are a couple of plays you can make. Uh, so wrong, poor game from him. This is the one that everyone's been praying for because now he's at 170 um, against Melbourne. Probably going to be a really bad score. He drops. Yeah, he hasn't ton versus them. Dogs at Marvel. So, you, oh, man, you might actually only have one week of a proper price drop. Yeah, because the Dogs game, 140, 138, 130, then Gold Coast, 146, 111. You might really only have one week of, like, a huge drop. They haven't... Yeah, I mean, if he does that, he stays at 6.30, which is entirely possible for him to go 120 and 140. This could be a bit lower, which would make this a bit higher and everything. Lowest I see him getting is, like, 6.20k, which is still a lot to kind of, like, make up to find the, the cash to bring him in. This Sydney game is pretty huge for him, though. If he doesn't go 140 in one of these, this Sydney game is huge because he'll have an extra week of dropping. Then the Sydney game, he could drop again. Um, and then everyone brings him in for Richmond, Hawthorne, West Coast. Uh, a couple of good end-of-the-season end of run type of games. Butters uh, started off good, I thought, but just kind of faded off, which it's against North, you know. Um... After you get up 50, it's like coast time, right? Well, surprised they didn't pull a lot of their players, like make, you know, just say they're injured and get them pulled from the game. Uh, Bont was good, 135. Um, it's a shame the dogs aren't any good. This was kind of how I saw the game going. Um, Swans just kind of beat them at all points. There was like, what, two quarters where it was close? And even then, it was close on the scoreboard only because of Swan's errors, right? Like, a couple errors they were making. Once they cleaned that up, um, they were off to the races, right? Like, the dogs just can't keep up with a team like that. Which is the biggest reason why, like, the dogs aren't a, an actual threat this year. They can't keep up with these top four teams. But, you know, Bond does try to carry them, and when he carries, he gets these big scores, so you'll take it. Flanders, man, what, what was this? It was laid out for an illness, um, and it really exposed how archaic their supercoach system is. By now, they really should have made it FPL-style bench. So, remove emergencies, completely remove them. Just... They're rubbish. Uh, if they actually want to make a change to the game that's meaningful and wanted, remove emergencies. Every change that they have made, 40 trades, 100,000 trade boosts, trade assists, which doesn't work, optimize, which barely ever works outside of buys. Um, you know, like, make a change that people want to see, and that's just remove emergencies and make it, it just takes whoever is in order. So if Sullivan plays and he's first, I get him. If Garcia plays and there's two donuts here, I get him. I don't have to double emergency because it's stupid. Like, no one does that. And they'd have the stats there. Like, you tell me that they don't have stats on their own game to say, like, no one is doing double emergencies in one line? Come on. It's stupid, it's archaic, and it's just... They're, 
the biggest fantasy league thing in the world is the Fantasy Premier League, and they have already fixed this issue. So why why are we still doing this? Like, it's right there. We have the answer. Um, but in saying that, Flanders missing for, for an illness. It's not really too big a deal in terms of him uh, as a player. Um, it's just, yeah, it sucks because that was, you know, he's averaging 117, so he gets 115. Uh, now you drop him down to an 88. So it is a huge drop, but what can you do? It's um, kind of Melbourne diff, right? Like, all Geelong was complaining about having to go play in the heat. Uh, Gold Coast should really be complaining about how coming down to play in the cold is causing all their players to get sick and having an actual change on the game. Whether or not they win this, uh, I don't think they win. I think Carlton was just the better team on the day, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, Merritt captained him, thought the first half he was pretty light, right? Like he wasn't doing a lot. Um, he's still keeping this whole... Uh, I don't need so much midfield time, I can just move up the ground a little bit, give Archie Perkins, give all these young guys kind of time in the midfield, Sardis and everything like that. Uh, Sardis a bit more outside, but you get what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so not the best in terms of that, but he still put up a good score versus Richmond. He had the, the goal late, um, which really helped the, the scoring and everything. Uh, if what I should have done... Is probably made him vice captain, but I did. I just thought Butters would go bigger here. Um, the, the vice captain options I had was Sarong and Butters, so you know, either way, I would have failed the vice captain. And uh, you know, Merritt sounded like the easiest option because Gorn doesn't actually score too well against Marshall historically, so I wasn't a fan of that. Um, two 95, you take it in a, a game where Gold Coast just really couldn't get going, like they couldn't get their kind of flow starting, um, how they move around the midfield, they're all like kind of contested balls and stuff like that, so couldn't really get it going, uh, maybe it's because it was the, this was at Marvel, wasn't it, so maybe the smaller ground isn't necessarily for them. Walsh won 14, you take it, uh, the Cripps kind of took over towards the end of the game, um, that's what held Walsh back, what did Cripps end on? Uh, I think it, he was like, yeah, uh, when I looked, I think he was on like 115, so yeah, 130, you take that, but um, no one has Crips in their team, and I don't think he's a trade-in at all this year, I think there's at least like 10 better options. Um, where were we? And then Rao, kind of same thing as Took. Sullivan keeps his spot, um, <clears throat> and with the news of Richards being hurt, uh, Sullivan's got his spot for another like, you know, couple of weeks. McAuliffe, uh got back in the team. He looked fine. I don't think he necessarily impressed anyone, but he does look fine. Like, Richmond are a rebuilding team. He looks like a guy that plays for a rebuilding team. Maybe there's some potential there two years from now, three years from now. Um, I, I don't know his age off the top of my head. I don't know if he has that kind of tr timeline to go for another two to three years in a bad team. <clears throat> he might just be someone they cut loose, but for now, I think it's fine that they're playing him. Um, I mean, it does help the team. He's not necessarily here for cash gen and everything like that. He's here to get me a loop, to be honest, but looks like Garcia's lost his spot, so... Yeah, it, it works the same way. Like, in this, I should have been able to get Sullivan and McAuliffe's score without uh, an emergency, so, you know... Darcy Jones didn't play, but like say I had another donut here, it should have went, all right, Flanders didn't play, so it takes the first score on the bench in order, which is Sullivan. And I'm not saying that because he's like the highest. You should be able to set this, so I press sub, and I can sub him to the second spot. Um, if I want, like say Sullivan ha McAuliffe has a great matchup or something like that, or he's you know an, a really good player, I can move him up to the first spot. And then if there's another one that's a laid out, it just also takes the second spot. Second spot doesn't play, it takes the third spot. That's how it should work. It's already done. There's already, like, the system out there. It's just either incompetence in knowing how to change it, or they just don't want to, which is even worse. Uh, like I said, Gorn went crazy, um, and, you know, Marshall just couldn't keep up. But it's kind of just how the Saints play, right? This super contested ball, 
Uh, they, they'll change it second half of the year, I'd imagine, if they want to make finals. Which if they don't, um, and the media doesn't cover it, that's going to be the biggest example of Victorian bias ever. Like, it, even last year, Saints were really disappointing when it came to finals, and they just didn't really bring it up um, at all. But they'll bring up, like, Port's failures and stuff like that, you know, is what it is. Uh, forwards, Heaney wasn't the best, but I was surprised he even played. I thought he could have rested this week. But, you know, he wants the Brownlow vote, so, you know, give that to him. Uh, Reed, not as good as last week, but that was to be expected. Adelaide said they were kind of, like, hunting him and everything like that. Um, and to the Adelaide fans that have already seen, like, posted, oh, my, you know, oh, we beat the Eagles and, uh, Harley's overrated and everything like that. Good job, you beat the West Coast Eagles in round 11. That basically is like a premiership win, isn't it? Like, good job. You beat one of the three worst teams by 100 points. Good job. Um, you don't see anyone celebrating when they beat North, so I don't know why people are celebrating beating West Coast. <clears throat> um, Powell was f better than expected, honestly. I was going to say he was fine, but he was much better than expected. Uh, we'll see if this continues, because apparently Will Phillips was best on ground for the twos game. There's no way they keep bringing him in and out. He's not a good AFL player. He's a good VFL player, but he's just not got what it takes to be an AFL player. He hasn't got the skill level yet at all. Maybe you have to just keep playing him and hope it develops, but I think I've seen enough of him. Like, I don't know how many games he has played. You could probably search that up, but... He's had more than enough chances. And he's not hurt either, right? So it's not like, oh, but he was hampered with an injury or anything like that. No, he was completely healthy during his uh, last, like, three, four-game stint in the AFL. Um, just not very good at all. Um, so, yeah. We'll see if he comes back in. If he does, it probably means another power half-forward game, which is just not good. But it's a bye week, and if that happens... What, so 12, he has of 13. You could trade him, I guess. You could go to Zorko. It's a forward foot forward. Uh, Darcy struggled against Swans, which this score wasn't actually meant to be on field, but it ended up being on field because I reversed trades very late. And again, a really stupid super coach system, you re reverse trades, it has nothing to do with Darcy being on the bench and it will put him back on field because they can't they can't sort this screen out the undo changes they can't sort it out they have finally made it that you can make individual undos and stuff through the round if they're not locked yet but they haven't worked it out that if i trade midfielders why does my forward line reset the, the you know cuz undo changes means all changes made in the week it should just be undo trades um, it's, it's very stupid, that system. But, I mean, it got me higher than Dempsey's score. Um, yeah, good, I guess, but... Yeah, um, shouldn't have been on field. I actually should have taken the 28 from Dempsey. I would have preferred that because it means the system is working correctly. Um, 5.56, probably time to move him on. Um, just fallen off towards the middle of the year has got his bike coming up in round 13 so maybe that will kind of be the refresher he needs but we'll see 344k um 81 break even if you've got him still i think you have to hold till he's by and then trade him on um there is one guy that i'm looking at this week that i might trade him to it's basically a sideways trade but with potential to be an upgrade uh, we'll see if I do it. I'm, um, you know, kind of flip-flopping in between, like, whether it's a good trade or whether it's just going to end my season. Uh, Jones in play. He's got the hammy. Uh, he'll be done for a couple of rounds. They've got 17 to 19. Basically means the season. Dempsey was terrible. Um, he's, yeah, 76. Against Richmond, honestly, he could hit that. He gets, like, two, three goals, takes a mark, like, action doesn't drop it. Uh, he could hit it. Who's he got after Richmond? What's Geelong's run looking like? Uh, Richmond, oh, 
Okay, so whatever he gets against Richmond, you have to train, because Sydney will limit him. He will not go big against Sydney. Carlton's not terrible at the MCG, neither is Essendon or Hawks, but you can't keep him for the Sydney game. Even though they have it, yeah, he's going to drop heaps. Uh, ideally trade this week, but if you don't want to, you could hold him a week. And then Joe Richards scores the 100, but it was in the moon boot, and now he's broke his foot or broke his ankle or done something to it because he's out for six weeks or something like that. So not a trade, obviously, just kind of a keep on the bench, which isn't great for me because I do need uh, a couple of players at this time of the year. But at least going out, he gave us 100, so we'll take it. So for trades, I think I'm going with Jones out because I need a someone that's going to play. And you could trade Richards, but I think he'll come back into the team, which will be good for late in the year if you just need like an extra player. Um, who else we got? Maybe it's five. Five for Dempsey. I'm going to go with Dempsey for now. Do that. And so I'll show the trade that I'm thinking of. So it would be, where is he? He's got a negative 19. Christian Salem. So this could just be a kind of a bait game. It's not necessarily the 121 I'm looking at. It's the 345k. Uh, break even of a negative 19. It's, if I do this... I'm basically swapping him for buy. And all he's doing is not really touching the field outside of buys. He's just on the bench giving me a score that if it's a 120, I can put on field because I'll have these dead rookies, right? Like uh, midfield, I have um, Hugh Garcia. Forward line, I'm going to have Richards. Defense, I have Hoare. Um, I'm going to have donuts that I can then loop for a Salem score. Um, we'll see if I keep it up, uh, move him forward, obviously, um, and I think I want that, and Will Dawson, so it, I am going a week early on him, which, again, it's kind of just how this trade works out, but say I'll do this, um, it would mean holding Dempsey for a week, which, again, I'm thinking I'm going to trade him, keep five till he's by, um, oh, man, okay, see if I can get everyone on field um what's the play garcia is not going to play sullivan will move you there put you on for sheasel prefer sullivan over closey oh boy okay uh how are we looking dempsey will play Optimize should work here, but it will move everyone, and I don't want it doing that. Actually, what will it do? See. Um. Okay, so it it's just gone the basic route. All right, whatever. Uh, we'll go with this for now, I guess. So how many I've got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 20 playing, I uh, probably want 21. 21's really like the sweet spot. Actually, I think 20 is the sweet spot, but I want 21. Maybe it's not Dawson this week. Maybe I'll go Frazier. Frazier has already got a price rise, but uh, it should be all right still to bring in. What am I doing? Break even. Still negative 36, and then bring in Dawson next week. I think that's the play. I'm going to go with that. 200k in the bank. Um, next week, the plan is Zorko. Do that. So that's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Wait, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yep, all right. So probably going to go with that because I do like the idea of a 21 uh, playing. So more chances to hit a good score but I will do this because I think Sullivan is a bit better than Closey. I mean, it doesn't matter, I don't think. I, I 
I can never remember how it does best 18 with emergencies. And let's take that off and put it, I guess, on you on the off chance he play. Um, Vice Captain, Captain, what do we got this week? Small week, so small pick ins. Uh, day costs, you probably have to consider. Um, just because it's Marvel. Well, what have it, his scores been at Marvel? 139. Has he played Marvel this year? 147 against the West Coast. Um, 134 against North. Yeah, I'll go with uh, Dacos. And having, there's no Geelong players that are relevant. If you've got a Stewart, I mean, it's not not really that great because he's had an off year, but whatever. Um, thinking Marshall or Ryan? Marshall or Ryan? Marshall or Ryan? TIO is Darwin, I think. Uh, what? I don't know what the scores are like from Darwin. Um, yeah, probably going to go Marshall. Uh, the West Coast Ruck situation is still really poor. They're still the worst at it, so yeah. Go with that, see what it gives out. Maybe Gorn is the play, um, because I don't know if Darcy's back this week. If he is, then it's fine, but... Uh, I mean, if he is, then don't do it. If he's not, then I think versus Luke Jackson, he probably could Captain Gorn. Uh, what have we got? Will Dawson. Ripley, I wouldn't trade in at, like, too many... Too much injury kind of problems. 530k, you can just let him play another week and see the score. Has he played three? Or is that his first game of the year? Yeah, he's only played one. What? Don't trade him in yet. At all. Um, yeah, that's very... Nah, don't trade him in yet. He's only played one game. Nah, uh, and it was against the worst team in the league, so... Oh, the second worst team in the league behind North. Um, yeah, so don't trade him in yet. It's a really bad idea. Even if it's just to get another playing player, there's definitely other guys to pick from. Harvey Harrison, not the worst option, but he could... His spot could be in a bit of jeopardy. I mean, ah, Richards is out, so maybe it's not. Maybe it's all right. 200k, I'd prefer Frazier or... There's got to be some other rookies. Um, English... Yeah, I mean, if you need a ruck. And then Stewart at 480k. But he's had a tough year, to be honest. He scored not too bad this week, but he had like a 70-point second half. Yeah, just not a great year. Look, 75, 84, 62, 77. Even a 99 is low for him against Hawks. That would have been the Anzac Day game. Or Anzac Week game, or is it Queen's Birthday? Whatever that one is. Uh, Richmond, I guess, is what people are bringing him in for. But Sydney's not great. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't do it. Uh, I think there's better options, especially like Salem. I'd probably take Salem over him. Um, don't clip that, by the way, because Salem could score 40 this week. Um, I'd break even, guys, to target. Yo, maybe, like, back end of the year... You need your final kind of defender, a final mid, maybe. Uh, I could see him last like a three-week stretch, so we'll see. Wine's not the worst option. He's had some big games this year. Uh, no one I'm missing. No, 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 no. Who else we got? Uh, Dunkley's the one that I'm going to target for that final mid spot. But again, he's also having like... I want to say it's a bad year. More so, that's not terrible. It's just not the best. But that's kind of that M8 spot you're looking for someone like that. Steel 133. If he drops a bit more, he'll go back to basically starting price. And uh, that's probably a good pickup. Baker, I'm not touching. So the forwards, I've kind of worked out how it's going to go. So, Phil, Powell might have to be a keeper. It'll be Heaney, Flanders... Oh, wait. Is there a forward missing? Oh, no. Heaney, Flanders, Powell. Like, we'll do this just for me to be able to see and get through it. Heaney, Flanders, Powell, Zorko, Fisher, Rankin. 
Zorko Fisher Rankin is like the final version. Next week I bring in both Fisher and Zorko. Um, I've already got like the money kind of working for it. Uh, could just do the third trade this week and make sure, like 100% guarantee I have the money in the bank to do it. Um, I don't know, I don't really see a point to it though. It would be like a Garcia or something out for it. Um, but yeah, so that's about it for this week. Um, yeah, see you all next week. Please stay out.